The number of MPOX cases is on the rise, and Toronto public health officials are urging residents to get vaccinated. Cases of MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox, have gone up following summer events and festivals. Toronto Public Health says that the number of cases in the city have more than quadrupled compared to the same period last year. It says vaccination is the best way to prevent further spread. Joining me now to discuss this is Dr. Abhishek Rout, Medical Director at Apple Tree Medical Group. Dr. Rout, thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Now, what are some of the symptoms or risks of monkey uh, mpox and how does it spread? Well, mpox is a viral disease. It's very similar to smallpox, but generally it's supposed to be less severe. It's so similar that smallpox vaccines are actually quite reasonably effective against it. So what we see early on is you have a fever, an intense headache, muscle aches, back pain, and swollen lymph nodes. Uh, over time, in the next one to three days, you're going to get a fever as well, uh, and then a rash starting on the face and then spreading to other parts of the body. The rash will usually be flat initially, and then over time will actually fill with fluid and eventually pus and scabs as well. So the total illness lasts about two to four weeks. Uh, many people will recover from monkeypox or mpox, but in some cases it actually can lead to severe complications for people with weakened immune systems. Uh, we would expect pneumonias or encephalitis, which is inflammation of the brain, or myocarditis, which is inflammation of the heart, all of which can be quite life-threatening as well. And what do we know about who the at-risk communities are and who should be seeking vaccination for mpox? Well, what we know is individuals with weakened immune systems are particularly uh, at risk. Uh, this certainly includes people with untreated or advanced HIV, those undergoing chemotherapy, uh, or individuals on immunosuppressive medications. Uh, we know that pregnant women are certainly at a higher risk, uh, and children, especially young children, can experience more severe symptoms. Uh, other people at risk that we do see are healthcare workers that are close contact with the infected individuals, and people in general in close contact with other infected individuals as well. Now, we've spoken about the people at risk, but I'm curious, is there a seasonal factor at play here like there is for other illnesses like the flu? Yeah, it's an interesting question. So what we do know is monkeypox spreads uh, usually with direct contact uh, or close physical contact. Uh, you can also have spread from contaminated materials and respiratory droplets. And finally, you could have it with infected animals as well. Uh, you would expect that you would have more of a seasonal play when you have these risk factors. What we do see is in regions near the equator where the climate is quite consistent, mpox cases has been reported essentially year round. Uh, in other areas, more in our northern hemisphere, uh, where we have a distinct dry and wet season, mpox cases seem to show this seasonal pattern. We know that the African CDC and now the WHO has declared a public health emergency. Is there a potential for the mpox to become another pandemic? I think we're all uh, looking at this with some concern there. Uh, with the declarations of the global public health emergency, uh, this was really driven by more than 14,000 cases uh, that we saw over the past uh, few months. Uh, we also saw about 524 deaths in the region. Now, the majority of those infections and deaths were actually among kids under 15, which is why we're quite concerned. Uh, Africa CDC uh, reports that they really need 10 million vaccine doses more than what they have currently to quell that outbreak before it can spread internationally. So there is some concern that it could end up being more of an international spread as well. And if it does become more of an international spread, what are ways to prevent yourself from getting it? Is it the same as what people were doing COVID-19, wearing masks, washing hands? What are some things that people can be doing? I think that's a great question. What, what we're going to see, uh, and we are seeing it already, uh, is governments advocating for vaccination. Canada itself also has our doses of vaccines that are, are protected that we can provide for at-risk communities. Uh, what we would also recommend is avoiding close contact with infected individuals. Uh, and it's hard to say who is infected, so really practicing good hand hygiene is a key method there. Uh, and then finally, isolation. So uh, not something that's unfamiliar with everyone, but avoiding close contact and isolation are really the paramount to decreasing any pandemic. So originally there was some controversy over the name of the virus. Originally it was monkeypox, but now goes by the name of mpox. Can you walk us through why the name was changed? Certainly. I think there, there was a lot of racism and stigma associated with the term monkeypox at the time. It was something that was observed online and in various communities as well. Uh, 
from a scientific accuracy perspective, the name monkeypox suggests that monkeys are the primary host of the virus, where really rodents are more likely to be the main host. Uh, and then finally, there's some global concerns. I think several individuals and countries have raised concerns about the name and requested the WHO to propose a new name. And so that's what's happened so far. Mm -hmm.